I promise that this isn't just an excuse to tell you that I'm pretty good at this game. This is also a really great game. Just someone appreciate that I'm in the top 30, okay? Please? I've always had this perception that people think if you play games with a controller, you're a filthy casual. But to me, it's the best way to play certain types of games. I love playing games with a controller. It just feels way more comfortable to me, significantly more ergonomic. A genre I almost always play with the controller is the twin stick shooter. It just feels good to move with the left stick and aim with the right. I know you may lose some accuracy without a mouse, but it makes playing for long periods of time so much more comfortable. The twin stick shooter is a genre that I just can't get enough of. I have a friend who chuckles a bit to himself every time I tell him I'm looking at a new twin stick shooter game, and it's one of my larger categories in my Steam library. So today, I'm bringing you one of my most favorite twin stick arcade shooters, Assault Android Cactus. I'm going to start this out with how this game plays and feels. You'll see the reason for that later. This is a simple game. All you really need to worry about is shooting. You can play this game with two sticks and two buttons. Move, aim, shoot, switch weapons. You fight to stay active, which is the most unique part of this game. If you die, it isn't game over or anything like that. You only lose when you run out of energy, and the only way to stay powered up is to kill enemies and collect the batteries when they drop them. You're fighting a countdown, and every second counts, so falling down and getting back up still isn't a good thing, but it's not the end of the world. Every enemy you destroy also drops power-up orbs that increase the power of your primary weapon. There are other power-ups that are dropped as you defeat enemies as well. These rotate between red, called firepower, which summons drones that fire more bullets and can block projectiles. Yellow, called acceleration, which increases your speed, pulls in batteries and weapon power-up orbs, and provides damage reduction. And blue, called shutdown, which freezes all enemies, provides you with invulnerability, and makes the shutdown enemies take extra damage. All the characters also have secondary weapons that somewhat complement the style of their primary weapons, but we'll talk about this later. Your secondary weapon has a cooldown, and when you switch to it, you get a very brief invulnerability period, so switching can get you out of a jam. And that's it. That's all that makes up the gameplay here. This game is very simple, which isn't bad. It feels good to play, and has nice in-game feedback, vibrations, and sounds that let you know things like batteries being picked up, or what power-ups you grabbed. This game takes quite a bit of practice, and the best place to start that is the campaign. It has a fairly good difficulty curve to learn all the ins and outs of the game. Remember how I started this by totally not bragging at all? Well, I did not start out anywhere near that good. I got stuck for quite a while on the first boss, but after a little persistence, I made it through. The campaign has 25 levels, including 5 different bosses. Each level is unique and steadily adds new types of enemies until you're dealing with them all together at the end. Most levels have something interesting going on in the design as well. Some have environmental hazards, others change in size and shape as you play. One of my favorites is called Focus, which is fought on an ever-expanding circle. Each of the bosses are unique as well, and they're easy to practice. They have multiple phases with unique patterns clearly delineated by segments in their health bar. Overall, the campaign is great fun and the best way to start out with this game. The only point I want to make about it is a point I've made about every game I've done a video on thus far, and probably some in the future. The story isn't all that important. This game has a story that is less important than what's going on in Brigador, but more important than Super Galaxy Squadron. But if you don't care, you won't miss out on too much by ignoring the story. There are two cutscenes, one at the start, one at the end. They're pretty nice, they're well voice acted, and they look good, but you don't get too much of a sense of the characters from them. The relationships presented at the end aren't earned because there's no character interaction throughout the game. That kind of stuff is hidden away in unlockables, which actually fills out the world quite nicely. My major complaint about this game is that it has some interesting lore and sets up the characters for more in the future, but the dev says that a sequel is unlikely. Not for lack of want, but for lack of sales. And that's the core of this game, and the campaign. I've divided up this video for spoiler reasons. Not so much story spoilers as unlockable spoilers. 
This game has a lot of unlockables to earn by playing, and I will be talking about them in some detail. So if you think you're interested in the game, but you don't want to know all the secrets, you can skip past this next part of the video. I'll leave some kind of annotation somewhere to do this, but after, this will be a fucking free-for-all of facts. I know this may seem excessive, but better safe than sorry? Okay, everyone that is still here, there is much more to this game. First of all, you only start out with four characters. Cactus, Holly, Lemon, and Coral. Defeating each of the five bosses unlocks a new android. Each of the different androids has a different set of weapons, which makes them all play just a little bit different. Cactus has an assault rifle, which fires in a straight line with unlimited range, and a hard-hitting close-range flamethrower. Holly has a homing weapon and a cannon that fires a massive cannonball that pierces through enemies. Lemon has a spread shot that covers a wide range and a precision rocket launcher. Coral has a shotgun, which is a shotgun and a plasma field that deploys a sphere that damages enemies and pushes projectiles away. Starch has a narrow laser and a missile pack that randomly homes in on any enemy it can find. Aubergine is the strangest one, and she really doesn't have a gun. Instead, she has a drone that acts kind of like a saw blade, and holding or letting go of the fire button moves the drone closer or further away from you. And she's got a secondary weapon that's basically a black hole. Shitake has a slow-firing railgun that pierces enemies and a mine layer that drops mines as you move. Peanut has a gun that functions kind of like a flamethrower, but shoots what would technically be considered lava, even though they call it magma, and that leaves piles of damaging lava on the floor. She also has a drill that shoots her forward in a line and does damage to anything she collides with. And the last one, Licorice, has a powerful forward-firing gun and a dash attack that does area of effect damage around wherever she moves to. All these androids have unique voices and cool little catchphrases when getting combos. They also have personalities that show through this as well as their interactions with the bosses. All of them are pretty cool characters, but I'm not too fond of Starch, as she kind of has this lol so random thing going on, and just kind of find it cringy. Which annoys me, because I play the best with her. But besides her, I won't go into each character's personality. Play the game if you want to find out. All the characters are great, even if I can't use all of them. Like how I just can't get a handle on Aubergine at all. And I still struggle with Licorice. Overall, it's just nice to have so many characters that all feel different from each other. Everyone is sure to find something that fits a playstyle they enjoy. And it wouldn't seem that any one character is drastically better than any of the others. The other unlockables are more lore about the androids, the world, the enemies, art galleries, and music. There are some things to unlock called EX options that mostly add silly little changes to the game, like changing a color filter or giving the androids normal sized heads, which made me realize that these aren't tiny androids with huge heads but people-sized androids with enormous heads. My favorite unlock has got to be when you get your first S plus on a level. You get Pro Mode, which shows you if you're maintaining an S plus in a level and can restart you automatically when you lose that S plus. There are metallic skins for each of the characters that get unlocked by beating every level in the campaign with them as well. Oh, and if you S plus every level, Peanut gets a silly little hat. Now. The campaign and characters are great, but where I think the real meat of this game lies is the game modes. Most specifically, the daily drive and infinity drive. I know I said it before, but I really want to reiterate. This game feels great to play. This game is really damn fun. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be here telling you about it, or I wouldn't have committed so many hours to the infinity drive. The daily drive is a short, 10 wave challenge that changes every day. It functions like a daily run in pretty much any other game. You get one shot, and that's your score for the day. The Infinity Drive is an unlimited wave game where you fight to get further and a better score. Besides all the time I put into getting S plus on every level, this is where I've put all my time into this game. I'm normally not that competitive in the leaderboard kind of way, but this game really sunk its hooks into me. Because the core gameplay is so great, the fight to get better and move up the leaderboard is really fun. 
and I always enjoy my time playing, even if I don't move up. I will probably be playing this game for an incredibly long time. I don't see myself giving up on climbing that leaderboard anytime soon. I even moved up 10 or so ranks while working on this video. I do feel like there aren't enough people playing this game, and I want to see way more competition on this leaderboard. So this is a challenge to anyone who has never played this game or is lower than me on the leaderboards. Come at me! I want to see you take me down, and if you do, let me know on Twitter or somewhere. I feel like I may have overexplained parts of this game and the characters, but that was just to show that there is something here for everyone. The core gameplay is simple and works fantastically. The game is just great fun. It's easy to play, hard to master, despite how cliched that phrase is. It also has the benefit of, if you love to play it, there can be no end to the gameplay, because of the game modes and the competitive aspects of it. I didn't mention the soundtrack, but surprise, it's great. You've been listening to some of it throughout this video. The game is easily one of my favorite games of all time. Hell, I love this game so much, I bought the physical version from IndieBox. I want more people to play it. I want more people to buy it. Maybe if that happens, we can show the devs that people really would love a sequel. About my only major complaint for this game is that it only has local multiplayer. Maybe a sequel could have online? Still, I recommend this game to everyone. So. Go get this game, and have a great time. I know that sounded like a wrap up, but one last thing. We're gonna start like a 40 minute discussion about uh, which Android is best. Not really in respect to any gameplay or powers or whatever, but in respect to waifus. Now, we should start by running through the pros and cons of each Android we're gonna go through in a list. And I think the first point that we wanna break this all down with is they're all different hair colors and the possible anime references that all of the, each little androids have to do with things. So, we gotta start at the beginning and how each of their hair is different. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope some of you are now interested in It's All Android Cactus. As always, I'm looking for some constructive criticism. I wanna keep improving these videos. People were very helpful last time. I've also added some art to the end bit here. The background is a screenshot I took in Elite Dangerous, and the other art is some that I commissioned from at Nuri Mooney Bunny on Twitter, which was also featured earlier. Check them out if you're looking for some nice art. They're linked in the description, and their name is on the screen now. But really, thank you so much for watching, and join me next time for another twin stick shooter. Also, can you guess my waifu? Eh, pro probably not.